I think sometimes people think the 6-5 Creedmoor is pure magic oh, yeah. and you can do anything with it, and that's not true. And I think sometimes people think I got to have a 300 wind meg to kill a deer, and I think that's not true too. Correct. Both of those statements are exceptional statements. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Cartridge Talks, fully loaded. This is 6.5 Creedmoor versus 300 Win Magnum. Ryan, we've got some of these cases and and boxes of ammo and gels with bullets that have been shot into them here. When I look at these two cartridges next to each other, all I can picture, and I guess you probably have to be maybe a little bit older to remember this cartoon, but there's like... Uh, that cartoon with like the big bulldog I think his name was Spike or something like is that is this black and white no it's not black and white I and then there's like the, the tiny little like you know whatever chihuahua oh, yeah. sized you know yipper dog that's his buddy they're like the the unlikeliest of friends yeah yeah and that's what I feel like we have here kind of like the uh, the big dog and the little dog but people love them both people love dogs I'm gonna tell you what are we doing here Mark we're comparing two cartridges that I don't think people generally compare, but people use a lot for the same things. That's very true. And not always. Just yeah, there's, some instances. There's, um, in the Venn diagram of usefulness, um, medium deer species reside in the middle. And people use these cartridges to shoot deer and other critters quite a bit. They certainly do, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? I'm reminded of a story I've told before on this podcast uh, about how how to choose a rifle. Okay. And this is, it was kind of the spirit of cartridge talks. Like, I guess when we were talking about, like, why, what, what, why are we doing this? It's to help people who don't know these cartridges. And maybe they're in the, the thick of it trying to figure out what's going to work best for them. Mm-hmm. Right? Um. And like a real life scenario, and again, if you've heard this story before, just fast forward a few minutes. Uh, a good buddy of mine, we'll call him Fixer, uh, drew an elk tag and had a finite amount of time to become proficient with a firearm. Uh, so he previously not hunted, elk, had he hunted at all? He absolutely. So he and I grew okay. up. He and I grew up together. Uh, we hunted um, small game and we hunted waterfowl together. Okay. And then uh, he had his little deer camp. I had my little deer camp. Um, so his experience with a rifle was a Remington 788 and 222 Remington, um, a 22 long rifle, an AR-15, uh, and then otherwise a rifled choke tube and a shotgun. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yep. And so he drew this elk tag and reaches out and he's like, man, I need a rifle. And I said, yeah, well, you take your pick of the litter if you want. And he was like, no, I'm going to do this. It's the thing I'm going to do. I said, all right. And he's lefty, so it wouldn't work out anyway because my guns are on the right side. Oh. Mm-hmm. So the cartridge topic debate came up, and he's a very analytical person, and he does not um, leave any stone unturned. And so I presented him three options. It was 6.5 Creedmoor, 30-odd 6, 300 Win Mag. And we went through you know, pluses and minuses of each. And really at the end of it, it the, the, the polarity between the Creedmoor and the 300 Win Mag was so stark that those two were the, the most talked about, right? So you have a 300 Win Mag, you have an uh, indisputable champion of big game rounds, right? Very few things walk the earth, you know, short of pachyderms and, and like whatever a rhinoceros resides in and hippopotamuses and things. That a 300 that, Win Mag... although I've never hunted... Any of those that yeah. you just mentioned, I think the 301 Meg likely has. Likely has. Certainly. Um, short of those very large, squish you, bite you to death creatures, a 300 Win Meg's more adequate for most things, right? Um, and so I, I came to, I guess, when in summary, I, I came down to this. I said, if you want a rifle that will kill an elk when you hit it in the right spot um, at extended distances um, or short, and is going to bring a hell of a lot to the table. It's 300 Win Mag. Mm-hmm. If you want a rifle that you can shoot and become extremely proficient with in a short amount of time, and with the right bullet, 
big caveat there, mm-hmm. uh, have a terminal solution for an elk. And I'd say the right bullet and the right distance. Well, sure. Yeah, it goes without saying. Um, the 6.5 Creedmoor. I said, I, I foresee if, if we were to clone him, we have two of him. Mm-hmm. And I set one fourth with a 300 Winchester Magnum Tika T3 light stainless left handed, and one fourth with a Tika T3 light left handed 6.5 Creedmoor. Did I say 6.5 Creedmoor? What was I said both. Yeah. The version of him that is shooting the 6.5 Creedmoor will be able to shoot more accurately, thusly, more effectively, and mm-hmm. ethically, within reason, caveat. Um, and will be more comfortable and confident with that rifle, considering the time constraints that we had. I told him it will not beat his wallet uh, to pieces, and it will not beat his shoulder to pieces. And so he commits to it. He picked up a Creedmoor. Because we also talked about like mule deer and whitetail and things like this. Yeah. In short amount of time, he had learned how to run a ballistic stable, which is not an overly difficult thing to do. But then put it into practice and repeatedly and do it again and again and again and again and again and became very good with it. Very good. He's an outstanding rifleman. Um, I don't think he would have ended up with the same solution in the same amount of time with the 300 Winchester. I can see that. And so he took out um, to the west with this 6.5 Creedmoor, Tika. Loaded with 127 grain Barnes LRX. That's what I would have paired it with as well, I think. And he folded a gigantic cow elk, like a $5 tent, at 300 and change. Do you know where uh, where he hit her? Right in the good spot. Just in the pocket? Yep. Yeah. The spot where it was supposed to go, and because he was well-practiced and very comfortable with the rifle, he was able to thread. And that was very dead elk, full pass-through. At what range did you say? I, th- I the number escapes me. I want to say 326. Okay. Yep. So not short. Not short. Yeah. No. Very, very dead elk. Um, and she crumpled. Like a $5 tent. Really? Yep. That's surprising to me. Uh, bullet placement's important. Yeah. But also, a state of animal awareness is important. Sure. Too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh-huh. getting, I'm getting pretty crazy about that. Um, and I think if he would have done the same thing with the 300 Windmag, you'd have had the same result, right? Dead critter. But I think, again, looking at his needs and the time that he had to become proficient mm-hmm. um, and ethical, the 6.5 Creedmoor allowed him to do that. Mm-hmm. So fast forward a little bit. He purchased the exact same gun in a 300 Winchester Magnum. Okay. So now he has both. I think he hates the Dickens out of that 300 Win Mag because it is just a bear to shoot. Okay. Yep. And, and I know that it's giving him more horsepower, and I know that it's giving him more energy, and I know that it's allowing him to drive a heavier bullet. Um, and, and every other part of me says, like, that is unquestionably the better terminal package. Yeah, I would agree. But if you, can't, elk, yeah. if you can't shoot it, it doesn't matter. You know, so... Uh, be- before somebody throws an anvil at me, I'm not saying take your 6.5 Creed Morale and go elk hunting. I'm saying that you could... With the right bullet, the right distance. Yeah, that'd, I th- be, that'd be fine. I, th- I think you just have to, you know, th- be mindful of its limitations. Absolutely. Uh, and then it can be incredibly effective. Mm-hmm. Um, I hunted elk this year yeah. with the rifle. Yep. With a three hundred Winchester short magnum, mm-hmm. Ryan. Mm-hmm. That I will say has a very comparable, you know, ballistics profile as the 301 Meg. We'll call it effectively identical. Effectively identical. Um, got an opportunity at a bull, uh, approximately 180 yards. Uh, we were in a burn. Uh, some limited shooting lanes. Uh, was with other elk, right? So they kind of lined out, and I was like, cow, 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 here comes the bull through the shooting lane. Uh, Get the bull to stop. And it's like, that cow's clear, that cow's clear, I'm going to shoot, you know. And it was also, you know, time was of the essence Mm -hmm. because one of these elk takes, like, another step, and 
Your window is gone. The window is gone, yeah, yeah. right? So I was like, clear, clear, boom. Probably rushed the shot a little bit in that way too because I hit the elk a little far back, which is really surprising because I have the mental picture of what my sight picture looked like. And maybe I just pulled the shot. I don't know. You, you know, who knows? I didn't hit it in the guts. I think I hit it forward of the diaphragm, uh, possibly like the back of the lungs. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't, uh, it, ultimately the bull went probably 10 yards and laid down, right? Like all the elk, you know, shot goes off, all the elk run, he runs with them. We wait a little bit, ease up, there he is, and uh, he's got his uh, head up. And then actually, and then his head is down. And that's like, okay. And so I get on the bull. He's got his head down. Oh, he starts to try and get up, you know, struggling. Uh, Shoot him frontal. Shoot him in the chest. He goes down. Uh, I mean, he actually, I ended up, I think, ultimately putting like three pills in him. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are, you know, 190 grain bullets out of a 300. Um, I think that's where you go talking even in, to your state of alertness mm-hmm. because that first bullet, you know, didn't put it down right away. I don't think he was going anywhere. Right. But it definitely changed his state. Like it's, in, it's incredible to me, obviously not ideal that, you know, it took like three pills to, to put that. Oh, elk down. I, man, I've been there. So then I'm just like, oh my gosh, like what if, <laughs> Should have had a Lapua. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you know, what, what, like, what does it take? Right. And wow. so then I'm like, oh my gosh, is it, you know, is a 6.5 Creed actually adequate? Which I do think it is. Or, you know, then I ask, well, in that situation, would I've shot a 6.5 Creed a little bit better? Could you know, have. I don't know. Possibly. I don't think so. I, I mean, no, I watched you shoot that rifle. Mark put up, I think I, I think I actually, here's what I might say. I think I might have made the same shot with a 6.5 Creed more. Then I might be in real big trouble. Potentially, yeah. Insurance is a real thing. There's no excuse for a bad shot, and big cartridges don't necessarily I, solve that. And I didn't make a perfect shot on that one. Right. Like I said, at the end of the day, dead elk. I mean, he went 10 yards and was like... Sure. But, you know. Yes. Uh, big bullets don't make bad shots good. No. Big bullets on the borderline of bad shots give you a little bit more opportunity for success. That's what I'd say this yeah, and and then bullet design. So caliber and and energy and velocity, if it's not in the right bullet, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, like everybody knows, I, I like penetration. Full metal jackets penetrate really good. That's not the whole picture. No. Uh, and, and for folks thinking that penetration is a silly thing, I don't know. I've threaded the needle on a lot of things. Um, bullets that go in and out are wildly effective. As long as they're doing the right stuff in the middle. Yeah, critical, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and I don't think anybody would infer that. We're saying, oh, shoot a full metal jacket. No, no, no. God, no. But uh, point is, I like like penetration. Generally speaking, mass and construction get you there. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes just construction gets you there, too, depending. Sure. Well, when you look at, like, You know, uh, we've done some of the gel testing, which again, and we always say that's an imperfect medium. It's just, but it's a consistent test medium. But you look at like um, one of those 127 Barnes LRXs out of a 6.5 Creed. It's 127, right? We were shooting 130s. 130s. Um, Your TSX is here. 137 or 127s a tip bullet. Impressive. Very. Right. And that's, you know, construction. And you don't have all that mass. Um, Should we talk about the gel? Is there anything else to touch on the cartridge before we start excising bullets? Have we stated our case good enough? These two are very different rounds. Right. Very different rounds. This is, this is like, um, like a Toyota Tacoma versus an F-350. Here's what I'd say. They're both trucks. I think, here's what I think happens sometimes. And I think it's part of the reason why we have these two cartridges sitting next to each other. I think sometimes people think the 6.5 Creedmoor is pure magic oh, yeah. and you can do anything with it, and that's not true. And I think sometimes people think, I got to have a 300 wind meg to kill a deer, 
And I think that's not true too. Correct. Both of those statements are exceptional statements. Um, Fill the air with something, Mark. I, I'm just looking up here some some drop data on these two. Okay. Yeah. You have you um, have you killed something with a 300 wind mag? Oh, sure, you have. I killed the. I think the only thing I've killed is a Sidka blacktail buck with yep. a 300 wind mag. Lots of stuff with the 300 short, which, like we said, I mean, I'd, I'd say from a performance standpoint, is identical. Yeah. So, I think we could. Almost, uh, which I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan, cut that out. Uh, but we can, like, you know, interject any of those isten- instances. You know, I've shot uh, bears with 300 short meg. I've shot white tails. I've shot black tails, uh, elk, antelope. Uh, it's a pretty versatile cartridge. Yep. Yep. No big bears, all uh, black bears. That's okay, too. Um, you know what's really cool about these two rounds uh, is on paper, well, not on paper, in practice, the, the 6.5 Creedmoor does a very decent job of emulating a lot of the trajectory that 300 wind make, brings to the table. Okay. Um, which is kind of why I was enamored with the 260, actually, which is, I realize, not a 6.5 Creedmoor. But uh, for I tried real hard with the 260 for a lot of years. Um, to make that a cartridge of kind of a mainstay in my lineup. Mm -hmm. Um, And unfortunately, it it was either the rifles were poor or the ammunition was less than choice. Mm -hmm. Um, Hand loads were great, um, but I loved the fact that the drop and drift characteristics were were not dissimilar to the 300 Winchester. Okay. So shooting and hitting my target at a decent distance was something that everybody loves a 300 wind mag for, especially in like long range target application. Yeah. Um, Cause it's a, it's a freight train. Um, but God, I hated the recoil. It just sucks. Takes you off target, shakes you up. It's, it's costly. Even if you're a hand loader, I mean, you're throwing not double, but nearly uh, the powder charge. Um, and you know, well, I mean, i uh, shooting at that elk the other day. Yeah. Uh, which I haven't done this before, and like I said, I've you know I've shot that uh, my that three hundred short forever. Yeah, cut my eye. Sure, Are you had woodpeckered. Yeah, bad. No, it's just a little. You had to put a stitch in it. No, okay. It wasn't like it wasn't anything crazy. In fact, I didn't even know. Like I knew that I got bit a little bit. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't think that it cut me. But it boy, it, it did actually. That's embarrassing. So I get. I, I guess, think I wasn't honestly. I think I free re- recoiled the rifle a little bit yep. instead of driving it, and then got me. I've been there. Yeah, I was there on the range two years ago. I forgot switch guns. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Did you go from six five Creed to three hundred win? Mm, no, I went from uh, six five Creedmoor to three thirty eight dot six. Oh. And uh, I went from a, a six five Creedmoor that's very gentle shooting and suppressed, weighs like twelve pounds. Yeah. To a three thirty eight dot six that weighs seven pounds twelve ounces. Yeah. Uh, 210 grain barns at 2750. So that was unfortunate. Um, y- yeah. Oh, yeah. Bonked me. A little trickle? Nope. No, no. So Viper HS 2 and F to 10 had the. Oh, it's got that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, still felt like I got punched in the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyway, I guess where I was going with that statement that I made earlier about trajectory is having the ability to accommodate for drop and drift um, is a big part of the inqu- a- equation, I suppose. Um, if you can't hit your target, you can't hit your target. And a rifle that you're more comfortable shooting more frequently is one that likely you are going to be able to place a bullet in the correct spot. Then picking the bullet to do the rest of the work is, is, is the, the magic part of the equation. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and I, I think that bodes very well for the six, five Creedmoor, which is exactly why me personally, um, as a, a hunter, a shooter, a reloader, I'm very comfortable with that round and I'm very comfortable with that round squaring off against very large mule deer. Um, you have, of course, pronghorn, which aren't notoriously difficult to kill, whitetails, uh, et cetera. It's a, it's a cartridge that I very much so enjoy hunting with and will continue to do so um, in perpetuity so long as I can because it is a wildly effective round for hunting. Um, if, if faced with an opportunity at larger deer, but I had the selection for different calibers, I'd, I'd still probably pick them. Um, 
What do you mean by larger deer? Like an elk. Yeah. Or a caribou or a moose. Yeah. Um, but that's 6'5", man. It is a marvelous little cartridge. Um, we've said this many times, but I think it bears repeating. I'd say particularly when hunting by yourself, uh, being able to watch your impacts and call your shots can be critically important. And the 6.5 is going to allow you to do that better. Yes. Yes. If you've got some crazy, you know, some super heavy 300. Or braked or, yeah. You know. Yeah. But I'd say like, you know, apples to apples, unbraked, maybe, you know, just your typical weight hunting rifle. The 6.5 is going to be more gentle and, you know, you're going to be able to press that trigger and hopefully watch the impact on the ammo. You know, it's funny. I, I have a 300 Win Mag. Got a really cool Remington American Wilderness rifle, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's got like a very fast barrel on it, mm-hmm. and I shoot 190 grain Barnes LRXs out of it at just bonkers velocity. I hate shooting that gun, but man, that I've got a lot of trust in that thing. It shoots so good. That was kind that's kind of just that's hit a big gun. I really need lightning. To, I got to bring that thing out and shoot something with it. Um, hard to shoot, hard to shoot uh, repeatedly. So. Okay. It, it's a rifle I trust, so the first one's usually good. Um, getting into the second one, finding that that uh, impact, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've done some positional work off that thing at at Winnequa, shooting the chickens. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I hit the chicken, other than I get an auditory indicator. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah, and and um, that six five, you can pull that trigger, you watch that chicken fly right off that thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it hits a hit. So, um, yeah, let's cut some bullets out. Okay. So we have up first, I believe these are going to be both the uh, Federal Power Shocks. Yep. Out of the 300, we have 180 grainers. Yeah. Box posted 2960. 100 yard impact velocity of 2746. Once you get eyes on this, Mark, I think I'm going to take it through the top. Now, we didn't record any guesses. Oh, we didn't. No. Nope. So, so let's start it at 180. Yeah. What do you think, Mark? I'm going to let you go first. I already know the answer, but. You already know the answer, huh? Yeah. yeah. I weighed the block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 150. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good guess. What are you going to say? I'll wait till I get it out here. Just got to remove a little weight. Well, you know what? I want to see after I get it. No, I knew you, you were going to change your dang answer. Well, I about, get to see it out of the block, too. It's, it's all, uh, you know, you're probably removing a lot of material the way you grabbed it like that. And also, um, Let's go. I will stick with my answer. Okay, cool. What are you saying? We'll wait till we get it on the scale, then I'll tell you. No, that's, <laughs> that's not how this works. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to look at the debris field here. You know, I've seen a lot of folks say like, oh, that wound cavity is definitely bigger on one or the other when it's actually the opposite. This is a tough one. Well, I'm going to so the, I'll look at both the Winnie, them. The Winnie definitely gave us more penetration, gave us about seven more inches of, of distance through the block. It's a bigger wound cap, permanent wound cavity for sure. It's, it is, but it's not that much bigger. Hmm. If, I think if you're standing where I'm standing, it's a little bit more substantial than you think. Yeah, I didn't look at these at all. Um, Mark, I'm going to say that this projectile weighs 162.4 grains. It weighs 121.8. <laughs> all right, Mark, price is right rules. We both went over and none of us get to go to the showcase round. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised. I didn't think it lost that too. much. I I didn't see that much in there. Um, oh, you know why? Partially why I said that? I used a data point that we had from that black tail that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That which very, I think we've talked about. It, it was very different bullet. Cor- uh, yeah. It was. 530 diameter. You know, most of these bullets are ending up around there. Here's where I'm going with that. Though. Yeah. That hit bone. Yeah. Uh, basically probably on the, or maybe not on the entry, definitely where it stopped yep. in that hind quarter, mm-hmm. right in the socket, uh, traversed that entire animal. But that went from 180 to 130. 
And I thought this just kind of hitting soft stuff along the whole way. Pretty different bullets, though. Yeah. I lost a little piece of lead there. I'm trying to form this thing so we can stick it in our cartridge case so we don't lose it. Um, but well, don't you need to measure the OD? I did already did. Oh, 530. Did. 530 OD. Most of them are ending up around that diameter, which is kind of neat. It's almost like they're engineered to do so. Um, pretty standard performance. It's a, it's a soft point bullet. Power shocks. Great bullet. Killed a lot of deer. Um, that certainly would have killed a deer. I think they would have killed an elk. I think it would have killed a moose. Would have killed just about anything you pointed it at. Sure. Get a fine job. Um, you see that, uh, you know, large increase of mass and velocity equates to not only a devastating wound channel, but good penetration. Mm -hmm. So 27 and three quarters inches. Um, and like I said before, there is no replacement for displacement. So long as your shot's good. Oh, that was a good excising. It really was. Yeah. Nice work. Totally blind. So this bullet looks wildly different. It certainly does. Like wildly different. From the pedal structure to how it opened and everything else. I mean, that thing is looks like a octopus. That is some serious expansion. <laughs> yeah, what what it looks like to me is it looks like a projectile that um, they said, hey, we should make it expand here, here, and here, specifically. Um, so fired weight was 140 grains. Mark, go ahead and take your best approximation. I'm going to say 128. Okay, I'm going to say 121.8. Jeebus. 135. I think I lost five grains. Can't believe it. Feel it compared to this no, one. I know. I, I felt them both. We're both wrong. Um, I was more right. Very interesting. So this bullet opened up some maximum OD across the flats. 0. 0.710. <laughs> That's really wild. Well, that kind of kicks the statement I just made right in the right in the mouth. Um, greater diameter. Mm -hmm. Higher percentage ret retained weight. Actually retained more weight than the 300 Win Mag did. Right. Certainly not impacting with the same amount of energy because that's just simply a function of mass and velocity. Your impact velocity with the 140 grainer at 100 was 2546 versus, yeah, 2746. So you're definitely bringing more horsepower to the table, but we're moving more material with this bullet, it would seem. Be interesting to have had a bone. I think that changes the story. It does a little It changes bit. the story for both bullets. It does. Uh, nonetheless, very interesting expansion out of that. Yeah. That looks like a very different bullet. That's interesting. It is. Um, yeah. So the 300 win, 27 and 3 quarter inches of penetration with that one. 21 and 3 eighths out of the 6.5. Yeah. Higher retained percentage of weight with the 6.5. Um, certainly. I think, th I think that's that lower impact velocity coming into play. I, th I think so too. I'll say that it's penetration. I'm wondering if it's because that frontal diameter was opened up to like... I mean, that's like got to be like just a point sail, just a break. Yes. Uh, I wonder what it would have done if that little lip would have rolled, rolled down just a little bit more, if that would have gone the full distance. Interesting thing though. Uh, both certainly adequate for cervids. I'd agree. I'd shoot a, I'd shoot a mule deer with that. Oh, yeah. Um... Should we take a look at the coppers, Brian? Yes. Should we transition? New blocks. New blocks, bye. Pause. All right, we are back. And we've got the copper projectiles here. Now, Ryan, so let's just make sure we get this right. So out of the 301 meg, I fired the Federal Premium Trophy Copper, 180 grainers. You fired the uh, Federal Premium with the Barnes TSX 130 grainers. I love copper so much for so many reasons. You may not know this. The wound cavities are so dramatic. Oh, my gosh. And they have... Uh, they, they, there's lots of great bullets out there. Barnes are definitely one of them. Well, the Trophy Copper did a fine job, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. My favorite part is the very concentric, spiralized uh, wound channel. I think that that is uh, an aesthetic. I think you're nuts. 
I, I think at the rate of speed at which this is traveling and it's actually it's rotations per second, it's just like I'm not I don't think it's having ter- a significant terminal effect. I'll take you up on that debate. Now what I would I I am not discounting the effectiveness of both of these bullets and that I would shoot either of them uh, and be glad to do it because I do really like this type of projectile. We'll take that up on another day. I've got another, I've got another, uh, I've got another thing planned to put that theory to work. Okay. Yep. That's funny. Don't be mad. No, I'm not. I'm just, just, I want you to cut that bullet out of there. Okay. Which one am I taking first? You're taking the 300 Win Mag out. That's this one. That's a 6.5. Yeah. Okay. Good job, Mark. We got there. We did. Okay. So this was the 130 TSX. No. That was a 180 Trophy Copper. What the heck is going on here? Mark? I'm just out of sorts. I got... I was confused from the start and then embarrassed of hey, my cutting. Listen, hedge your bets on what that thing weighs. If it's, I, I think this is going to be uh, 179.8. Oh, 178.6. I'll take it. That's pretty good. That is good. Ah, uh, very textbook copper. Hey, Mark, I'm going to forget about what you said about that wound channel. Um, it's not aesthetic. It's performance. 628. Nope, I stand corrected. 648 expanded across the pedals. Very uniform. Very. It's a That's copper per usual. Yeah, we, we see this every time. We've not sheared a pedal yet. We've also not hit any bone. Yeah. Um, fair amount of damage on the bullet from what looks like a prying tool. <laughs> uh, but, but nonetheless, exactly what we expect out of the Trophy Copper. And, of course, I'll say it again. These bullets are great for everything from pronghorn to the biggest critter you can shoot at them. They don't seem to discriminate about angles. Now... <clears throat> What else can you say about that? It's just yeah, every, did a great job. Oh, we time. should uh, penetration thirty-two and three quarters inches of penetration. Woof! Big old nasty wound cavity. You see that spiralization, which Mark feels is totally aesthetic, in and throughout. The I entirety. think at the rate of speed that it's going through the animal and its rotations per second, it makes sense. Do, Do you math. even need the giant knife for this one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do at least one relief cut. Watch your fingers. Okay, this one went much, <laughs> oh, much more smoothly. My goodness. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, fired weight, Boardman, 130 grains. So this is the 130 Yeah, TSX. that's a TSX. Not tipped, but standard uh, T. Okay, I feel like... Interestingly enough, just looking at this particular bullet, which fired some of these, some of the other cartridges we've done, I believe, haven't we? Yes. Um, look at the angle at which the pedals folded back there. Well, sure. They are going with rotation. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's aesthetic. It's yeah, so but I'm much saying force. what I'm saying. I'm saying that's more dramatic than I feel. Either I didn't notice in the other ones, or it's a little bit more dramatic. It's it's almost like it's so much force that it was taking copper. And bending it in the direction rotation. That's dramatic. That's pretty wild. What's your weight guess? Uh, I'm going to say 130 grains. 129.8. Way to short it, Mark. 130 flat. Damn it. (laughs) Well, I had to say something different. I know it. I know it. Remove some of the uh, detritus. (laughs) There isn't any. 538. 538. And what was the 300? Let's measure that. That's bigger. 638. Yeah. 
that significant. It, it, it that's what, I mean, just visually looking at the two, it's like, eh. My stars. Well, that's pretty neat. So looking at these blocks, Ryan. Yeah. You know, one might go, oh gosh, look how far the 6.5 went, as far as penetration goes. We've also received a little bit of criticism of placing too much precedence on penetration in our tests that we've been doing. Um, I don't, I can't disagree, I guess, entirely, right? Because uh, it's not the whole story. Uh, I think with our testing, though, it's the most visual thing, you, or it's one of the more visual things you can look at, so it's almost like hard not to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, all I can say is, you know what lets out more blood? It's two holes. Mm-hmm. And you know what lets in more air, two which holes. collapses lungs? Mm-hmm. Two holes. Yeah. And if you've ever had to do a single side blood trail at negative 27 in northern Missouri where you don't have an exit, it's tough. Well, and let's look at, uh, let's talk about this a little bit more. Quartering, let's say it's a quartering away shot. Yep. So you hit, you know, maybe. Uh, got some goo to go through before you get to the good stuff. Got some goo to go through. Maybe even like the stomach. Maybe mm-hmm. the, maybe the stomach. Maybe it's a, uh, the morning. The animal's been feeding all night. Yep. Now you got a lot of food in there. That's a lot of stuff. It's barricade. Bullet to go through. You uh, then you want it to get into the vitals. Yep. And like you said, hopefully make two holes because guess what? That rear hole. Plugged. It ain't going to bleed. Not much. Uh. The other thing I'd say, though, if a bullet traverses that much of a deer and does get into the vitals, it probably isn't going to go that far anyway. Not likely. Especially, but, if, you, especially if you perf the diaphragm. Right. Um, but more is better, in my opinion, in that case. Describe the, uh, the bullet path, though, because you were talking about the 6.5 sure. falling off a little bit. You earlier, can, off, you can off see, and, and the block is not positioned to illustrate this wonderfully because we actually are picturing the bottom side of the block to the camera. You can see... Yeah, we did have to turn the... So you could see them. Yeah. You can see where that bullet absolutely ran out of gas and then took a nosedive through Mm -hmm. the block. So it was was on an outstandingly straight trajectory. And you're talking about the 6.5 right now. Correct. Yep. Outstandingly straight trajectory. And then it's like, nope, I'm out. And the last probably 7 to 10 inches... I would say seven to eight inches um, is just down like that. And that it's, it's shed all of its energy and velocity into the block at that, at that juncture. Whereas the 300 is pile driving effectively to the end of its course. Um, and actually even looking at the, the wound cavity, like just behind the projectile, you can see where the, the um, six, five is just kind of getting pushed through it. Right. Okay. Without a ton of violence, um, there's there's not such a, a distinct spiralization going on in there, and, and sure. it, it's it's almost a sealed hole. Not quite because it's still cutting material out of there, but it's almost right. a sealed hole. The 300 wind mag, like you can see, evidence of rotation to the end. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they both definitely killed deer, but yeah, you know, there's no question, right? You, right. You, I mean, you could look at the box and be like, the yeah. 300 is more. Oh, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. I also think the 6.5 is adequate. Right. The right place, right time, mm-hmm. and context. <clears throat> so are we disputing what we found, I guess? Um, I was just going to go over a couple fun facts here. So muzzle velocity of the 180 grainer out of the 300, the trophy copper, uh, 2960, impact velocity of 2780, Yours had a muzzle velocity of 28.25, impact velocity of 26.03. Hmm. What's your deduction from that, doctor? They were closer than I thought they were going to be. Sure. Function of ballistic coefficient and launch <laughs> velocity. My deduction? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm probably about ready to give my final thought on the issue. Please. Uh, these are both fantastic cartridges. Yep. I essentially shoot them both very often. Uh, when I'm and and I just have a, you know, like I said, a, a personal affinity for the 300 short mag, yeah. right? But like we said, ballistically, terminally, 
you know, pretty identical. Uh, so I'm just going to say I shoot these both very often. I shoot these both very often for the same types of critters. Sure. <laughs> so what you're saying is you'd say Wisconsin Firearms Opener is coming up. Would you hunt your 300? Yes. Would you hunt your 6.5? Yes. Oh. Do you ever feel there's a space where you have too much gun? No. I agree. You'll never make something too dead. Correct. As long as, you know, um, you will shoot different rifles better than... Sure. I think um, I think there's a, a a stronger case for not enough gun. So here's my here's probably my final thought. I think a person can do everything they want to do with a 65 and a 300. I think if you were going to own two guns, these would probably be the two guns that I own. That's a damn good point. And that's probably why I shoot them both often and regularly, sometimes interchangeably, and like we've talked about many times before, sometimes I take the 300 because of critters that I might encounter versus the ones that I'm after. I understand. That's a really good point. I think it's good to be a two-gun hunter. But if you had to be a one... Oh, I'm getting the 300. Bingo. Yeah. I think it's a good point, too. Or, even though we're not talking about it, 30 out sex. There, that's my final thought. I think that's outstanding. Anything to add? No. I think both... Of, I echo every one of your statements. I think today... That's, that's, that's a very good point. I think... Um, if you're thinking that the 6.5 Creedmoor will do everything the 300 Win Meg can, you're dead wrong. Yeah. I think that if you think that anything you can do with a 300 Win Meg, you can do better than the 6.5 Creedmoor, you're also dead wrong. Um, mm-hmm. un- unless you're going to start making some changes to your rifle, um, making it possibly more difficult to carry, um, and you're okay with subjecting yourself to the recoil increase, the cost increase... Um, I think 6.5 Creedmoor is a great choice for somebody who's a little bit recoil and cost conscious. But don't be taking it out there thinking that it's going to drop pachyderms because I don't think it's the answer for that. And you want to take your rifle, again, considering you're like, if you're, I'm going to have one main rifle. Yeah. And shoot it recreationally. Yeah. 6.5 is a hoot. Yeah. Oh, did, yeah. Oh, very much so. Cool. There. There you have it. The most polarizing comparison we've made yet. I mean, this is a case where, I mean, we've said, do you need one or both before? Yeah. This is a case, in my opinion, yeah. where you need both. Next up, 22 long rifle versus 12 gauge. <laughs> <laughs> Which is better for long range prairie dogs? Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, cool. We'd never do that to you. No, no. I, this, this might be as far as we, I know I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put, <laughs> I'm not going to put us in a box, Ryan. Okay. Uh well, thank you, Ryan. Heck yeah. This is always fun. It is. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, what do you think about these two cartridges? Do they belong in the same ring together at all? Are we insane? Did we provide some good insight here? What do you think of the performance looking at these things and the gel blocks? Uh, do you have these cartridges? Cartridges? Do you have both of these cartridges? David and Goliath. Did we talk you into one of these cartridges? Yeah. David and Goliath. Yes, yeah. exactly. Cool. Let us know. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.